In the last period, we have studied about the various rules to ascertain or assign the oxidation number to the uh, various elements present into the covalent compounds or ions. Uh, now let us uh, solve some problems so that we can understand it better. So here we have a question. Assign the oxidation number to the underlying elements in each of the following species. Let's look at the first one. That is our NaH2PO4. So as we are aware that the oxidation number of all or the algebraic sum of all the elements present into the compound, the sum of their oxidation number should be zero. Therefore, we can write that oxidation number of sodium plus as we have two hydrogen, two into oxidation number of hydrogen plus we have only one phosphorus, oxidation number of phosphorus plus we have four oxygen, four into oxidation number of oxygen should be zero. <coughs> Now, my dear students, by using those rules, we need to provide the oxidation number two. So for sodium, we just write two so, uh, sodium. For two oxidation number of hydrogen, we just write the symbol H. So two into H, the oxidation number for phosphorus, we just write the symbol P. And for the oxidation number of oxygen, we just write the symbol O. So finally, we write Na plus two into H plus one into P plus four into O is equal to zero. From the next question, we will not be writing the this word, but we will simply showing the oxidation number of the elements with their formula. We know that alkali metals will always have a plus one oxidation state. Here, the hydrogen is bonded to the alkali metals and still it has plus one oxidation state. Oxygen has got minus two oxidation state and the oxidation state of phosphorus we need to find out. The hydrogen will have oxidation state minus one only when it is bonded to the uh, alkali metals or alkaline earth metals alone. If it is bonded with the other elements, then we can consider it the oxidation state as plus one. So for sodium, we'll write plus one. For hydrogen, we'll write plus one. Phosphorus, we just write P. And for oxygen, we write minus two. So finally, we get plus one, two into one, two plus P and four to the eight, but minus. So we'll have one plus two plus P minus eight is equal to zero. This one plus two gives us three plus P minus eight is equal to zero. And therefore P minus eight plus three is equal to zero. Therefore P minus five is equal to zero. And therefore the oxidation state of phosphorus is plus five. So we can ascertain the oxidation state of phosphorus as plus five into this compound. Now. After understanding this, it will be easy for you to understand it. Same way for NaHSO4, we want to find out the oxidation state for sulfur. So we shall write Na plus H plus S plus 4 into O plus is equal to 0. For sodium, we write plus 1. For hydrogen, we write plus 1. For sulfur, we write just sulfur because we want to find out the electronic uh, oxidation number. And for oxygen, we write minus 2. So we get 2 plus S minus 8 is equal to 0. Therefore, S minus 6 is equal to 0. And therefore, S is equal to plus 6. So in NHSO4, sulfur has got plus 6 oxidation state. Same way from, from here, H4P2O7. We can easily identify that hydrogen will be plus 1. Phosphorus we need to find out and oxygen will be minus 2. So according to the formula, we can write 4 into H plus 2 into P plus 7 into O is equal to 0. For hydrogen, we write plus 1. For oxygen, we write minus 2. So 4 into 1 plus 2 into P plus 7 into minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, 4 plus 2P minus 14 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2P minus 10 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2P is equal to 10. And P is equal to 10 by 2, that is plus 5. So here, the oxidation state of phosphorus is plus 5. Same way, my dear students, in K2MnO4, we have 2K plus 1Mn plus 4O is equal to 0. For potassium being alkali metal, we can write plus 1. Mn we want to find out. And for oxygen, we write minus 2. So 2 plus Mn minus 8 is equal to 0. Uh, therefore, Mn minus 6 is equal to 0. And here, the oxidation state of Mn in K2MnO4 is plus 6 oxidation state. Let's move forward for CaO2. Here we are all aware that the oxidation state of alkaline earth metal Ca will always be 
plus two, we need to find out the oxidation state of oxygen. So Ca plus two O is equal to zero. For Ca, we can write plus two into two O is equal to zero. Therefore, two O is equal to minus two, and therefore O is equal to minus one. And we can easily find out that the oxidation state of CaO2 or oxidation state of oxygen in CaO2 is minus one. And from that, we can easily say that it is the peroxide of calcium. So we call it as a calcium peroxide. This is your calcium peroxide. Please remember the name of this compound is calcium peroxide. Generally what happens when we see H2O2 or Na2O2, we call it peroxide. But for with the alkali metals, sorry, with the alkaline earth metals, it is CaO2, which is calcium peroxide. Please understand this well. Now we have the next uh, here, we have NaBH4. You can see that this hydrogen is placed at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, the molecular formula. So as bonded to sodium compound, which is a metal. So you can see that sodium and boron, both are more electronegative than hydrogen. So as the sodium and boron are both electronegative than hydrogen, the hydrogen will have the minus one oxidation state. This is what we need to remember by ourselves. This compound is known as sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride. So from this itself, my dear students, we can easily understand that the, the word hydrides falls into the name and that is how we can say that this hydrogen is a, is a minus one or is having minus one oxidation state. There is one another formula also that when the hydrogen is present at the end of the formula, at the end of the chemical formula, we can say that it has got minus one oxidation state. But there is an exception, my dear students, that in ammonia, this hydrogen is having plus one oxidation state and your nitrogen is having minus one oxidation state, sorry, minus three oxidation state. Please remember that it is the ammonia in which hydrogen has got plus one oxidation state, but nitrogen has got minus three oxidation state. Though hydrogen is written after ammonia, but here the, though hydrogen is written after ammonia, but nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. But if we compare the electronegativity, electronegativity of both sodium and boron is more than hydrogen. And that is why hydrogen, uh, less than hydrogen, and that is why hydrogen is more electronegative than both sodium and boron. And that is why hydrogen, hydrogen gets the negative charge here. So we write Na plus B plus four into H is equal to zero. For sodium, we write plus one. For hydrogen, we write minus one. And for boron, we find it as one plus B minus four is equal to zero. Therefore, B minus three is equal to zero. And therefore the oxidation state of boron is plus. Same way, my dear students, if we have H2H2O7, in this case, if you look at what we find is H2H2O7, we have two into H plus two into H plus seven into O is equal to zero. For hydrogen, we write plus one. For sulfur, we write sulfur. And for oxygen, we write minus two. Therefore. 2 plus 2s minus 14 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2s minus 12 is equal to 0. 2s is equal to 12 and s is equal to plus 6. So here, the oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6. Now let's move forward. So here, the oxidation state of sulfur we find is plus 6, my dear students. Uh, I think I have missed one of the compounds there. Let's move forward, yes. Then we have the next compound, my dear students, that uh, that next compound is KalSO4 SO4 twice into 12H2O. Now here you can see that this 12H2O is a neutral compound. So we can just put zero for this neutral 12H2O. We just need to find out about K into LSO4 2. So for K we write K, for aluminum we write aluminum. Now, as there is a bracket, we put a bigger bracket and we put this two here. And then inside we have one sulfur. So we put one sulfur, we have four oxygen and then we close the bigger bracket and then we write 12 H2O. Now we are well aware that potassium will always have a plus one oxidation state. So we'll write plus one. Aluminum will always have plus three. 
these two are put same sulfur we want to find out so we do not put any value for oxygen we write minus 2 for this h2o we just put 0 and thus we will have 4 into 2 into s minus 8 because 4 to the uh, 4 into minus 2 that is minus 8 is equal to 0 therefore 4 plus 2 into s and 2 into 8 that gives us 16 so 2 into s gives us 2s 2 into 8 gives that gives us minus 16 so 4 plus 2s Minus 16 is equal to zero. Therefore, 2s minus 16 minus 16 plus 4 will give us 12. So we can write 2s minus 12 is equal to zero. We might have written it that here that 2s minus 12 is equal to zero, and therefore 2s is equal to 12, and as 2s is equal to 12, s is equal to plus 6. So here in this compound, the oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6 oxidation state, or the oxidation number of sulfur. is plus 6 now we want to study the very important part about the oxidation state or oxidation number which is known as the paradox of fractional oxidation number sometimes we get the fractional oxidation number actually we should not get fractional oxidation number but let us see why is it happens and what are the things that we need to keep in our mind sometimes we come across with certain compounds in which the oxidation number of a particular element in a compound is shown as a fraction for example if you look into the compound the name of this compound is called carbon suboxide c3o2 if we find out the oxidation state of carbon we find that the oxidation state of carbon is 4 by 3 how do we do it for two oxygen two to the four so we will have minus 4 for oxygen but we have three carbon so it is a plus 4 by 3 so here you can see that for carbon we get plus 4 by 3 oxidation number same way if you look at br3o8 for 8 to the we will have minus 16 for this so for all this br3 we will have plus 16 and for each bromine we will have 16 by 3 so here where the oxidation number of bromine is 16 by 3 same way my dear students when we look at this uh, na2s4o6 for each oxygen we will have minus 2 so total 6 to the 12 so we will have minus 12 here now for this two if we think we will have plus 2 sorry plus 12 now if we think of na2 sodium will always have plus 1 oxidation state so sodium will have plus 2 so if we remove this 2 from 12 then s4 If sodium, two sodium, if two sodium have collectively plus two, then for S four we can write total ten or plus ten, and for each S we can write ten by four, and this ten by four is either five by two or two point five. So in this compound, my dear students, we can see that the the elements got the fractional oxidation number. For example. in na2s4o6 we can see that the oxidation number of sulfur which is also known as the sodium tetrathionate the oxidation number of sulfur is 2.5 i have shown you the calculations even that for carbon in uh, C, uh, c3o2 we get c is equal to 4 by 3 for bromine we get 16 by 3 and in other calculation i might have shown you that in uh, the compound the oxidation state is fraction that is 2.5 so here in this compound na2s2 na2s4o6 the oxidation state by calculation for sulfur we get 2.5 the idea of fractional oxidation state or fractional oxidation number is unconvincing because electrons are never shared or transferred in a fraction the idea of fractional oxidation state should be taken with care and the reality is revealed by the structures only so whenever we get the fractional oxidation number we should look into the structure of those compounds when we look at the structures of carbon suboxide that is c3o2 we find that these three carbons among these three carbon two carbons are directly bonded with the oxygen whereas one carbon which is bonded with the another carbons with the double bond so the all the valency of this carbon has been satisfied and this carbon has ascertained the oxidation number 
whereas those carbons which are directly bonded to the oxygen they are ascertained the oxidation number plus 2 so here now it is easy for us to understand that the oxidation state of carbon out of these three carbon the oxidation state of two carbon is plus 2 whereas one carbon has got the oxidation number 0 because it is not directly bonded to the oxygen same way my dear students if you look into the br3o8 you can see that in this three br you can see that this br and this br or br let us give them the numbers br1 2 3 This is Br1, this is Br2, and this is Br3. So Br1 and Br3 are bonded to three oxygen. One, two, three. One, two, three. But Br2 is bonded with only two oxygen, one and two. So the oxidation state that is ascertained to Br number two is plus four, whereas the oxidation state given to the Br number one and Br number three is plus six. So this is how, as the number of oxygen bonded to Uh, bromine we can ascertain them or we we can give them the oxidation number so in br3o8 two br has got oxidation number plus 6 whereas one br has got oxidation number plus 4 so 6 plus 6 12 plus 4 16 and this is how the uh, minus 16 oxidation state of eight oxygen has been satisfied so looking into the structures now we understand the various oxidation state and the anomaly of fractional oxidation number can be solved same way when we when you look into the compound like na2 s4 o 1 2 3 4 5 0 6 which is simply uh, turned into na plus 2 ions and s4 o 6 minus 2 ion so here we have the solution uh, we we have the ion As for O6 minus 2 ion, you can see that in the as for O6 minus 2 ion, there is negative charge on two uh, terminal oxygen. Now, you, if you give the number to the various four carbons, we have S1, S2, S3, and S4. Out of these four carbons, S1 is bonded to three carbon. Sorry, S1 is out of these four sulfurs. S1 is bonded to Three oxygen and S4 is bonded to three oxygen. Even out of these three oxygen, each oxygen has got one negative charge. So instead of you know minus two minus two multiplied by three and giving minus six, as there is one 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 negative charge already present, instead of this minus six plus one, it gives us the total minus five charge. due to this oxygen so due to this oxygen there will be total minus 5 charge and one charge is due to this negative charge and that is how my dear students for this s4 we ascertain the plus 5 oxidation charge for this s1 we ascertain the plus 5 oxidation charge and this s2 and s3 will have zero oxidation state because they are not directly bonded with any other carbon so here this bond or this sulfur are ascertain the zero oxidation state and this is how we understand the oxidation state present into the various elements into the tetrathionate ions the element marked asterisk that is star in each of the above species exhibit different oxidation state that is the oxidation or the oxidation number from the rest of the atoms same element present in each of the species so you can see that this star mark wherever i have made they show the different oxidation state from the other element and that is what i have done for all the elements that we have discussed now the same more example with some more example we will try to understand this anomaly of the or the paradox into the oxidation number if we look into the oxidation number of h2so5 and by doing the uh, same calculation this compound is known as peroxo monosulfuric acid in this peroxo monosulfuric acid my dear students if we calculate the oxidation state of sulfur we find that 2 into h plus 1 into h plus 5 into o is equal to 0 for hydrogen if we put plus 1 and for oxygen if we put minus 2 we get 2 plus h minus 10 is equal to 0 so s minus 8 is equal to 
and s is equal to plus eight. Now sulfur has got only six valence electron. Sulfur has got only six valence electron. So plus eight oxidation state is not possible for sulfur. Sulfur has only six valence electron, and that is why plus six oxidation state is not possible for sulfur. So when we look at the uh, when we look at the structure of our H two SO five, what we find is this sulfur is bonded with oxygen oxygen one and oxygen uh, three with the double bond, but with oxidation two and oxidation five, uh, oxy oxygen four and five. They are bonded with each other. These ox these oxygen four and five, which are bonded with each other, they are called peroxide oxygen. So this this compound has got two oxygen which have the peroxide bond with each other. That is why these oxygens which are put the uh, star, they have their oxidation state minus one with them. Where the all the other oxygens. Have minus two oxidation state with them. So here you can see that due to this uh, anomaly of having the per peroxide bond into H2SO5, the oxidation state in normal way it was found plus eight, which should be actually plus six. So when we calculate it this way, two into H plus three into oxide plus two into peroxide O plus S is equal to zero. So for peroxide O we write minus one. And for oxide O we write minus two, and finally we get two minus six minus two plus eight is equal to zero. So S minus six is equal to zero, and we get S is equal to plus six. That means in H two SO five, the oxidation state of sulfur is plus six oxidation state. Let's understand some more examples. If we have the compound named peroxo disulfuric acid, which is having the formula H two S two O eight. When we calculate the oxidation state of sulfur into this compound, my dear students, two into H plus two into S plus eight into O is equal to zero. That is two into plus one plus two into S plus eight into minus two is equal to zero. That is two plus two S minus sixteen is equal to zero. Therefore, two S minus fourteen is equal to zero. Therefore, two S is equal to fourteen and S is equal to seven. Again, the oxidation state for sulfur plus seven. Is not possible because total sulfur has got only six valence electrons. So here we need to look into the uh, structure of these compounds. So let us have a look to the structure of this compound, my dear students. That when we look at the structure of this compound, we will we will look into the structure of this compound called peroxo disulfuric acid. We will see that there is again a peroxide bond present into this compound. So you can see that both the oxygen are bonded to each other. They have the minus one oxidation state. Whereas all the other oxygen, we ascertain them the minus two oxidation state easily. So here we can ascertain the oxidation state minus two to four car uh, four oxygen, but two oxygen will have minus one oxidation state. So while calculating the oxidation state, we will write two into hydrogen. Plus two into oxide oxygen, sorry. Plus two into peroxide oxygen. Plus six into oxide oxygen. Plus two sulfur is equal to zero. So hydrogen for hydrogen we write one, my dear students. Uh, for ox uh, peroxide we write minus one. For oxide we write minus two, and for sulfur we write s. So finally we get two minus two minus twelve plus two s is equal to zero. Therefore two s minus twelve is equal to zero. 2s is equal to 12 and s is equal to 6 and thus the uh, oxidation state of sulfur is found to be plus 6 into peroxo disulfuric acid same way my dear students if you look into the compound h2 s2o3 and if we calculate the oxidation state 2 into s plus 2 into s plus 3 into o is equal to 0 for hydrogen if you put 1 for sulfur will put sulfur and for oxygen if you put minus 2 we get 2 into 1 plus 2 into s plus 3 into minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 into 2s minus 6 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2s minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2s is equal to 4 and s is equal to 4 by 2. That is, s is equal to plus 2. But plus 2 oxidation state is not common in the sulf sulfur oxygen compounds. 
please remember that plus 2 oxidation state is not common in sulfur oxygen compounds it may be find in some other compounds but in the sulfur oxidation or sulfur oxygen compound plus 2 oxidation state is not common so what happens here that these two sulfurs which are present here are bonded with the double bond these two sulfurs which are bonded with the double bond out of this one sulfur and the sulfur number 2 this sulfur is ascertained the minus 2 oxidation state because it has replaced the oxygen and bonded with sulfur with the double bond so here in this compound my dear students we have two type of sulfur 2 into h plus 3 into o plus s1 plus s2 is equal to 0 now we want to find out the oxidation state for s1 but for s2 the oxidation state has already been mentioned which is minus 2 Thus, my dear students, two into one or two into plus one plus three into minus two for oxygen. For S one, we'll write S one, and for S two, we'll write minus two. Thus, we will have two minus six minus two plus S one is equal to zero. So, S one minus six is equal to zero, and thus the oxidation state of sulfur, that is S one into this compound, is plus six. Please remember that this sulfur, which are bonded with the another sulfur. By double bond is ascertained the minus two oxidation state. Now this is the thing that you need to remember. So please remember this. Now if you look into the compound called Ki three, if you calculate the oxidation st uh, state of the uh, uh, iodine in here, one into K plus three into I is equal to zero. There were one into one plus three into I is equal to zero, and there were one plus three I is equal to zero. Three I is equal to minus one. And the oxidation state of iodine is equal to minus one by three, which is a fraction. So again, it is a paradox of having the fraction fractional oxidation number. Actually, what happens? Iodine molecule when it combines with the iodine ion, it gives us I three minus ion. So here, if you look into the structure of iodine, you can see that this iodine has their octet complete, and this iodine has got negative charge. so this 14 electron this 8 electron causes the negative charge or minus one charge overall so only this iodine contains negative charge whereas all the other iodine should be uh, should be having no charges and that is why the oxidation state for this two iodine is marked zero whereas for this iodine only we put minus one oxidation state and that is why while calculating the oxidation state of uh, ki3 we write 1 into k Plus two into I plus one into I, where this I is ascertained the oxidation state zero, and this we will calculate. So one plus two into zero, that is zero plus I, is equal to zero, and this is how the iodine has got minus one oxidation state. So these are the various ways by which we can calculate the various oxidation state for the various awkward examples. We have some more examples to study about. some mix oxides even shows fractional oxidation state there are some oxides my dear students these oxides are mix oxides and they even show the fractional oxidation state for example if you look into the fe3o4 if you calculate the oxidation state 3 into fe plus 4 into o is equal to 0 therefore 3 fe plus 4 into minus 2 is equal to 0 Therefore, 3 Fe minus 8 is equal to zero. This minus 2 we assign for oxygen, and thus, and therefore, 3 Fe is equal to 8, and Fe is equal to 8 by 3. This is a fraction. Actually, this oxide Fe3O4 is a mixture of two oxides FeO and Fe2O3, where in FeO the oxygen has got plus 2 oxidation state, and in Fe2O3 the iron has got plus 3 oxidation state. Same way, my dear students. If we look into the Mn3O4, same as Fe3O4, Mn3O4 is a mixture of MnO and MnO2, where where one Mn has got plus two oxidation state and another Mn has got plus three oxidation state. Same way, my dear students, we have another example of a mix oxide that is Pb3O4. Pb3O4 is a mixture of two moles of PbO and one mole of PbO2. Thus, you can see that PbO plus PbO plus PbO2 total we have four oxygen, and then we have one, two, and three, three Pb, and this is how we get Pb3O4. 
in PBO the oxidation state of PB is plus two, but in PBO two the oxidation state of PB is plus four, my dear students. So please remember, if possible, all these are uh, oxidation state because it is better if you understand as well as remember these cases which are having the paradoxical nature or which are having the uh, uh, abnormal oxidation state, and their true oxidation state can be understood by looking into their structures. Now, my dear students, we want to study about the highest oxidation number of an element. So, my dear students, if uh, an element has got x number of electrons in the valence shell, then that maximum number of electrons that can be lost by an element can be its highest oxidation state. So, the highest oxidation number of a representative element, that is the element belonging to the S and P block, the first for first two group, my dear students, that is the group one and group two, we can write that highest oxidation number is equal to their group number. So element belonging to group number one will have their oxidation number plus one. Element that belong to the group number two will always have their oxidation number plus two. But for group number 13 to 18, we can write that highest oxidation number is equal to their group number minus 10. Let us understand it with the example, my dear students, that here you can see that we have written the group number 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. If you look into the various elements, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, if we write their compounds for sodium, we'll write NaCl, magnesium, MgSO4, aluminum, AlF3, silicon, SiCl4, phosphorus, P4O2, and for sulfur, we write SF6, for chlorine, we write HClO4. And thus we get their highest oxidation uh, uh, state. So for sodium, it is plus one, for magnesium, it is plus two. Now, if you look into the group number for 13 minus 10, so you will write plus three or three. For 14 minus 10, you will write plus four. For 15, group number 15 minus 10, that is plus five. Group number 16 minus 10, that is plus six. Group number 17 minus 10, that is plus seven. So their highest oxidation state is equal to their group number minus 10. So for 13, it is three, for 14, it is four, for 15, the highest oxidation state is five, for 16, the highest oxidation state is plus six, and for 17, the highest oxidation state is plus seven. In third period, the highest, oxidation, uh, the highest value of oxidation number increases or changes from one to seven, as shown in the above table. You can see that, that in the third period, these are all the elements of the third period, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and into the group number 18, we have actually argon, but the oxidation state, we do not calculate for the inert gases. So we have not shown it because it does not form any compound. So here you can see that if we go from element sodium to the chlorine, the oxidation state increases one by one here. And this is how the highest oxidation state increases into the element of the uh, element of the third period from one to seven. And that is what it was explained into the table for all of us to understand it well. Now we want to study the trends of change in the oxidation state in a long form of periodic table. So in a long form of periodic table, we need to study here how the oxidation states changes. Metallic elements have position, uh, metallic elements have positive oxidation number. So mostly the metallic elements have the positive oxidation number. Non-metallic elements have negative or positive, both kind of oxidation number possible. We have seen that uh, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, uh, just except fluorine, all the other like bromine and uh, iodine and chlorine, when they combine with oxygen or fluorine, they show the positive oxidation state. Thus, you can, or even if we have seen that oxygen, when it combined with the fluorine, it shows the positive oxidation state. So the non-metallic elements, they can show both positive as well as the negative oxidation state and generally 
the metals or metallic elements shows the positive oxidation state the atom of transition elements usually display several positive oxidation state the various transition element that is from group number 13 to group number uh, uh, you can 12 you can say that they show the variable oxidation state not all but many of them shows the variable oxidation state for example in group number 13 indium and thallium show plus 1 and plus 3 oxidation state in group number 14 tin and lead shows uh, the plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation state in group number 15 the antimony and bismuth show the plus 3 and plus 5 oxidation state so this is what i'm talking about the uh, 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 p block elements due to the inert pair effect my dear students this p block element shows the oxidation state with the difference of the two units the group 3 elements like indium and thallium show plus 1 and plus 3 oxidation state group 14 elements like tin and lead show plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation state group number 15 element show like antimony and bismuth show plus 3 and plus 5 oxidation state so this p block element show the variable oxidation state which is deferred by two units it is not necessary that the oxidation state of transition element differ by two units this is the basic difference we observe in the variable oxidation state of p block elements and d and f block elements when d and f block elements show their variable oxidation state just we have seen that in case of fe we have seen the two oxide feo and fe2o3 we have seen that here fe was having the oxidation state plus 2 and here fe was having the oxidation number plus 3 so here the oxidation state differs just by one unit so my dear students whenever there is a difference of oxidation number or oxidation state among the uh, p block elements they are generally differing with the two units but it, when it comes to the d block and f block elements we call them the transition elements they need not to have the difference in their oxidation state by two units they can have the oxidation state which is differing by one unit even uh, polonium and astatine are not mentioned as they are radioactive element from the group number 16 and group number 17 and they are the last element of the group number 16 and 17 so we have not mentioned the group number 16 and 17 here because they are the radioactive elements thus the highest value of oxidation number exhibited by an atom of an element generally increases across the period in the periodic table so my dear students if we go into the period the highest oxidation number generally goes increasing or increases as we move left to right into the particular period my dear students hope you have been enjoying your studies in the next period my dear students we will study about the oxidation state and oxidation number now we should stop here and we'll we'll study the next portion into the next period i hope my dear students you are enjoying your studies and now if you have any doubt you can